Hey, we are the heat changers. And are everywhere. Hey, Marisol. I learned so much the last time we talked about solar energy. And I was thinking that the renewable energy sector has strategic importance for governments, especially those with climate change commitments. So like last time we talked about what the EU is doing to get fit for 55 by the year 2030. That sounds to me like sort of a mandate for the renewable energy industry, like they should be able to deliver. So it sounds like governments will have to enhance their manufacturing base to produce as much clean energy as possible in the shortest period of time. Well, if we talk about potential, the installed capacity of the solar thermal sector in Europe can triple by 2030, reaching 140 gigawatt thermal, and the breakdown would be as follows. 73 gigawatt thermal in buildings, 31 gigawatt thermal in district heating, and 36 gigawatt thermal in the industrial sector. So now, Europe has already a strong and well-established manufacturing capacity in solar thermal. In fact, the industry has a global technology leadership. It provides tens of thousands of local jobs, meets over 90% of the EU demand for solar thermal systems, and is even a net exporting sector. And why is that? Mainly because it doesn't require critical minerals and has a variety of supply channels for its main components, such as copper, aluminum and glass. In contrast, the PV industry heavily relies on imports to the EU, mainly from Asia, despite significant public investments. And this is the case also for other renewable energy technologies, and not only in the European Union. In my last call with Alexandra Sutu from Solar Heat Europe, she was telling me that it has become a sort of race for subsidies as several countries have adopted financial packages to support the manufacturing of clean technologies. Now that you mention it, the US just launched the most significant climate legislation in its history, the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. It offers funding and programs and incentives to accelerate the transition to a clean energy economy and significantly increase the output of new clean energy. Does Europe have anything like that? The Green Deal Industrial Plan aims to boost Europe's net zero industry competitiveness and facilitate a speedy transition to climate neutrality. However, it is crucial to prioritize fair competition among all renewable technologies and include all net zero industrial sectors in the deal. During our previous conversation, if you remember, we talked about the common misconception of exclusively associating energy with electricity and solar with solar PV, disregarding the heat sector and the solar heating industry accordingly. Therefore, it is critical to obtain recognition for the solar heating and cooling sector's importance and influence at the EU level, as it will have a significant implication for what happens later in all EU member countries. The Green Deal Industrial Plan is very complex. It has the four pillars. That's just a communication and proposal for strategy. And then there will be different initiatives like the Net Zero Industry Act, which will be translated as legislation at some point. So now it's a proposal for legislation. It was launched by the Commission. So in the next steps would mean to, to start the discussion with the Parliament and with the Council. But this is very important because at some point this will be part of the legislation in the, in the EU. Initially, in the Green Deal Industrial Plan, solar thermal was not mentioned, so it was broader. There were other technologies like the usual suspects, let's say PV, wind, heat pumps. But now in the Net Zero Industry Act, we have clearly stated solar photovoltaics and solar thermal. So that's very good. Our main goal, so the goal of Solar Heat Europe for the solar heating and cooling sector, was to have clearly stated in the Net Zero Industry Act and in the Annex that solar thermal is one of the key net zero industries and it was very important for us to explicitly refer to solar thermal versus the broader solar technologies because as you know uh, many times we face this challenge that when people think about solar technology they think about uh, solar power so we wanted to have solar thermal explicitly mentioned there which it happened so that's very good uh, news awesome Congratulations for that. But wouldn't it make more sense for all the renewable energy technologies to play like a team rather than like competitors? 
when a customer comes to us, they want a solution. They want to solve the big problem that they have, how to have a renewable heat, how to change from fossil fuel to renewable heat. And there is not a silver bullet. So there is not one technology. There is not heat pump that can do it. There is not a solar thermal that can do it. There is not a kind of a biomass model, biogas, because there is a combination of this technology. He is Carlo Matteo Semeraro, Chief Sales Officer at Absolicon, a Swedish company committed to the transition to renewable heat. It helps industries to reduce fossil fuel consumption providing a profitable, easy-to-install, and emissions-free energy solution using solar thermal resources. Absolicon was established in 2005 as a research and development company in solar technology. Today, Absolicon is a publicly listed company with more than 10 years of operational experience from all around the world. But why solar thermal will be always one piece of this puzzle that you need to have in each factory? It's because when you compare solar thermal to the other renewable technology that you can integrate with them, solar thermal in the long-term perspective has the lowest level high cost of it. So solar thermal is the no regret choice to use in your heat solution in order to, to have your level high cost of heat during the lifetime of your factory down and competitive. When we explain what the importance of heat in their uh, industrial processes, they understood that uh, the solar thermal is part of this, uh, is the solution that they are looking for. Solar heat is a significant component of the ongoing energy transition, providing households and companies with a reliable and cost-effective source of heat. Moreover, the solar thermal industry has the potential to expand throughout of the EU due to its low entry barriers, both in terms of technical expertise and investment. This technology is essential in reaching climate neutrality, energy security and affordability targets, underscoring the importance of giving it due recognition. To maintain its competitiveness in the European and global markets as demand for renewable energy surges, it is crucial to establish favorable framework conditions for the solar thermal industry. Clients are coming to our site in Gran Canaria, Nairobi, Greece, Italy, Sweden. So very, where also the sun is different. And they can touch the collector. They can see they're producing hot water or they are really amazed when they can see that it's producing steam. Did he say steam? I wonder how they pitch that to potential clients who have been relying on fossil fuels forever. The switch to solar heating solutions could be a bit scary since they don't know anything about them, right? That's correct. Lack of knowledge is a barrier. However, facts and figures speak for themselves. The concentrating solar collector of Absolicon is designed to run industrial processes, a critical aspect in any manufacturing company. We're talking about systems that not only supply hot water, but also generate steam, as they can supply heat from 40 degrees Celsius to 160 degrees Celsius. Carlo was telling me that their pitch includes three main parts. First, they make sure people understand that heat is half, at least, of the energy consumption in industry. Second, they explain effectively how the technology can be integrated into processes using really good explainer videos. And third, they have plenty of references where they can show how the technology works in reality. In addition to this, it is important to mention that the efficiency of their solar collectors is certified by the two most important product quality schemes, the Solar Keymark in Europe and the SRCC in the US. And to make things round, their business model includes licensed production partners who can operate a production line on site which limits transport costs and allows for adaptation of material choices to the conditions and supply of their local market. The best is what is scalable and reliable up to now, because uh, we don't have uh, a lot of time. We have uh, maybe from seven to 10 years to make some big changes. Hydrogen is a valuable solution, but we will see hydrogen in 2014 when it will be competitive for solar industrial processes needs. 
So, solar thermal is uh, ready. Our business model is scalable thanks to the fact that uh, we are selling production line to different countries. So, we gain scalability each time that uh, we install a production line around the world. Now, we sign with Canada and Egypt, we have one in Sweden, and we have our partner in China. And each time that we install a production line, we are able to, to produce 150 megawatt thermal for each production line. The ability, this comes to the story of the reference that uh, we have that solar thermal has in general. So it's a technology that uh, is proof, but is new for so many industries. But solar thermal is uh, in operation for more than 50 years uh, in many plants. Yeah, I remember from last time that solar thermal is a growing market already in several parts of Europe. And that means that the technology is proven and working. So coming back to my question of renewables teaming up, is there a combination of technologies that makes the most sense and could be deployed faster? In my opinion, the technology that now is getting ready also is a heat pump. When it comes to lower temperature, are ready and already in a very high phase of commercialization. The uh, medium high temperature is fine. They are getting there. Let's say that is a solar thermal uh, three, four years ago, where uh, they need some uh, technology development still in order to arrive to the commercialization. So I think that in one year, we will, we are already talking also with some potential partner of EPAM to integrate. We don't see EPAM as a competitor. We see as a, a partner to develop together project. So we see that uh, in one, two years, they can be also scalable and they are already available. And of course, there is always this uh, big uh, partner uh, for our technology that are the heat batteries. And on the heat batteries, the, you have uh, also a, a lot of technology, some technology that are developing. We are always having an eye to different of these uh, heat batteries to understand how we can combine because the perfect combination at the moment can be solar thermal, heat battery, and heat pump. There, with this configuration, in many factories, we can see that we can arrive between 50 and 70% of uh, renewable heat. And of course, with uh, uh, a timing that is uh, shorter than uh, hydrogen or electrification, that they need a lot of infrastructure and uh, a lot of development that can be done maybe in 50 years. True. I've heard about heat pumps and hydrogen recently. It's such a complex system. And with governments in a race to support net zero technologies, I can imagine that there will be massive amounts of funds for all these technologies. And that it'll be hard for politicians to make those decisions because they're not experts. In many countries and regions, energy policy centers on promoting the electrification of the heating and transport sectors as well, with the aim of achieving decarbonization. The underlying argument is that this is the simplest way to reduce carbon emissions in these sectors. However, electrification of heating should only occur when it is supported by renewable energy sources and efficient heating solutions. Solar thermal is a key player. It offers a readily available option. It provides a completely clean supply of heat because it does not depend on the carbon content of the electricity supply. Additionally, solar thermal is highly cost competitive for various applications, making it an attractive option. It can even boost the efficiency of other technologies such as heat pumps. To sum up, solar thermal is cheaper, faster and team player. Coming back to the conversation with Alexandra, the lobby work is extremely important because it is about awareness raising, timing and positioning. It's first of all to, to gather the drafts. So there are always drafts before the official proposal will be, will be out. Reaching out to policymakers to express concerns or share inputs. Uh, in this specific case, we sent a letter to the European Commission and the main ask of the letter was to include solar thermal giving data and information about the sector and the, the impact of the sector today in, in Europe in terms of manufacturing capacity. So our main ask was to include solar thermal with the goal to maintain and expand the production capacity. Besides that, there was also a meeting that we had with several other organizations. The meeting was with the cabinet of uh, Franz Timmermans, the vice president of the European Commission. 
there were different topics tackled uh, there, so not only the Green Deal Industrial Plan, but this, this was one of them uh, for sure. Now, when the proposal was launched, and when any proposal is launched, we usually have a reaction. So in this case, we had press releases, both on the Green Deal Industrial Plan and on the Net Zero Industry Act. Initially, it was just to highlight the importance of, of the of, of solar thermal as a EU-based sector that should be included in, uh, in further uh, documents. And uh, in this case, with the Net Zero Industry Act, the message of the, of the press release uh, was that uh, our sector is, uh, is ready to, to deliver as a Net Zero Industry sector. So far, so good. What's next for Solar Heat Europe? The next uh, step is for them to start the discussion with the co-legislators, which is the European Parliament and the European Council. The European Commission will be gathering inputs through a consultation, and they are also launching consultation before they start the process with the co-legislators, and the uh, Solar Heat Europe will be contributing to it, of course, based on uh, inputs from our members and our sector. Solar thermal technology is increasingly being adopted by the industrial sector in many regions worldwide. The most recent survey of Solar Thermal World indicates that in 2022, 114 systems with a total capacity of 30 megawatts were installed in the industrial sector. The top five markets were the Netherlands with 38 systems, China with 17, France with 14, Mexico with 13, and Germany with nine. Since 2017, at least 1,089 systems have been commissioned, resulting in a total installed solar thermal capacity of 856 megawatts in the industrial sector. When people hear that heat is up, they start to understand that what they did until now, electrification for or green electricity is good, but not good enough. And they are starting to really go deep to understanding why these people are saying it is up and what is the message in branding. The case for clear messaging and branding makes sense to me. It's intimidating to understand the complexity of the renewable energy system, but it's also super exciting to know that we can already have a lot of impact through combinations like solar thermal, heat batteries, and heat pumps. The messaging keeps me motivated. Let's do what we can do best. Solarize heat. And... Are you ready to become a head changer?